<clears throat> Good morning and thank you everyone for being present here today. Uh, we have a special guest, a special seminar set up today on the topic of conservation here in South Florida. It is my pleasure to introduce uh, uh, Mrs. Rosa uh, Ries here. Rosa is the district conservationist in Royal Palm Beach, field office serving Palm Beach and broad growers uh, on their farms. Uh, Rosa was raised in Puerto Rico, uh, having mountains to the east and the Caribbean Sea uh, to the west. She grew up loving nature. She was always involved in science clubs and leadership opportunities with her class. In 85, she graduated with a bachelor's degree in agronomy and animal husbandry. And in 87, she graduated with a master's degree on agricultural education. That same year, she married Ishmael Ries. They both worked as extension agents in the mountains of Puerto Rico, teaching best management practices on coffee crops. In 88, Rosa and Ishmael started their careers with the USDA, Soil Conservation Service in South Florida. This change exposed Rosa to a new culture and different way of farming. Rosa and Ishmael have three boys. And during Rosa's career with the USDA, NRCS, she has worked in several field offices helping farmers with water quality and quantity concerns in South Florida. Rosa has assisted them with conservation planning, policies, and regulation applicable to the farms for compliance with USDA, NRCS, and other local agencies. With that, I'll hand it over to Rosa. Thank you. Thank you, Django. I know that um, after you were reading that, I noticed um, I dated myself with all those dates there. <laughs> so good morning to everybody. Um, again, I'm Rosa Reyes, and I work with Natural Resource Conservation Service. And uh, Django has asked me to talk about our programs that we have for uh, farmers and ranchers, and that that's why I'm here. So, um, but before I do that, I want to talk to you about my agency a little bit. Why? Because I don't want you to think that my agency just started the other day, just was created two, three years ago. It goes back. It goes back a little bit more than that. Um, our agency is more about productive land and um, healthy environment. That's what we are all about. We like to talk about resource concerns and you're going to hear a little bit more about that. Um, again, before I, we, we discuss a little bit about in the, um, incentive programs, I want to talk a little bit about who we are and how we started. We started in the 1930s. Uh, and it, it all started with the Dust Bowl days and uh, where the storms will come and, and grab the topsoil and just a uh, million of, of of uh, topsoils and it was taken to the Atlantic. And that's the way it was created, uh, NRCS. Back on the days, it wasn't called Natural Resource Conservation Service. I don't know if there's any old timers here. It was called Soil Conservation Service. Um, and when I was hired, that was named. So in the 90s, just to describe better what we do, it was changed to NRCS, Natural Resource Conservation Service. So who we are, since that time, we have kept the commitment to protect and conserve the soil and other natural resources on American private land. If we, re if we go back and look at the census, we're going to realize that a lot of the farms, the majority of the farms, a high percentage of the farms are in private lands, are in uh, hands of people like you and me, okay? So that's very important. That's why we like to work with you. We work with customers to help them to reduce erosion, protect wildlife, promote good land use, and preserve the nation's natural resources. Again, in every slide, you're gonna see that natural resources. Um, at NRCS, we take pride in our partnership. So when I talk about partnership is like today, um, I'm here with the research center. We could work with the University of Florida. We could work with water management. We could work with Florida Department of Agriculture. We work with different, because uh, we do not know it all. 
if we all gather together for the same goal, then we partner with others and then we could do, we could work together. Um, we work with great people who live and love the land and that is you. That is you who work in the land. And I know you're out there because you have to put bread on the table, but um, you're doing it with a passion. And a lot of the farmers or the majority of the farmers and ranchers I work with, they have a passion for what they do. And I really enjoy that. And a lot of times I could bring some information and some technical information to you, but I learn from your experience. Definitely. NRCS is recognized as a global leader in soil science and technology. The agency uses science and research to create understandable and effective solution to natural resources problems. Um, one of the sites that I have bookmarked on my computer is the Edis one because there's so much information there. And a lot of information I give to our farmers and ranchers comes from that. Um, NRCS invests a lot of money um, every day in conservation systems that help producers stay profitable, profitable and productive. So one of the things I like about my job is that uh, we provide a one-to-one -one personalized um, advice. I'm not gonna have all the answers. If I don't have the answers, I will let you know, hey, I'll find you the answer. I'll either go to IFAS, I'll either uh, research it with another uh, farmer that maybe there is a something that has worked better for him. I put in contact some of the farmers and ranchers to connect with each other if they don't know each other. So that's one of the things I like about my job. NRCS helps people make investments in their operation and local communities. One thing that I like about my job, another thing that I like about my job is that if I'm working with you, it's because you want to work with us. Uh, we're not regulatory. We don't regulate. So when I am invited to a farm, it's because you have invited me to go to that farm. Um, we, NRCS generates and manages and shares the data, technology, and standards to help make informed decisions. Each one of our practices, each one of our um, conservation practices, uh, BMPs, if you want to call it like that, they're, they're very similar, um, has standards and specs for a reason. And the ones we have here are tailored to Florida. We have national guides, and then we have Florida uh, guides also. Many people, and I was talking to Jenga about this uh, before we started, uh, many people think that we work with maybe small farmers or small ranchers or big ranchers or big uh, farmers. We work with all kinds of farmers. You come through our doors, you call me, you email me, we will work with you, okay? And we see how can we help you. So that's just an example. Um, we partner with you. Um, and it's very important to protect the wildlife while also keeping working lands working. So you want to make sure that you keep doing what you're doing in a just in a better way. Okay, enough of that. Let's talk about our incentives and our programs. Our programs are based on identifying resource concerns. There goes that word again, resource concerns on your farm or ranch in combination with your needs. Working with both can help resolve local natural resource problems. So with your help, you and me and looking at your farm and your experience, definitely we're gonna go ahead and identify the biggest conservation needs in your farm. And who knows better than you, your needs on your farm. Then we're gonna, gonna go ahead after we identify, okay, you have a water problem here. Your, your plants are not getting enough water or maybe we need to test the water. Do you know what type of soils you have? Um, 
and we kind of pro we kind of have to prioritize okay what's more important for you because you have to balance okay i want to be a good steward of my land but at the same time i need to put bread on my table so let's let's prioritize and see what's more important so we prioritize those conservation needs that can be addressed by us by my agency and our cs now we work together to solve resource concerns and needs in your farm Okay, so you asked me, what is a resource concern? A resource concern, it's every piece, we look at every piece of your property is unique with opportunities to improve natural resources and address any areas of concern. There's anything that you have in your property that may concern you. Uh, sometimes our human activities contribute to the condition of natural resources on the land they can help improve them or they can contribute to their decline, which can result in what we refer as a resource concern. If you have an example, if you have um, maybe your culvert needs a flash bore riser and you're getting too much water or maybe you're not getting enough water, maybe you need to do something with that culvert, maybe it needs to be deeper, maybe it needs to be higher. Maybe we need to uh, maybe we need to check and see what nutrients you have, and you may need to do a uh, nutrient management um, program. So all the stuff we take in consideration. Um, one of the things that is very important, and this is just one example that I want to give, is conservation practices. Um, cover crops, a lot of our conservation practices, they reduce sediment losses from the field and the amount of sediment being delivered to the lake or to canals. And we all know about that. If, if you're here in the EIA, um, there's a lot of sedimentation going on. And uh, so we need to make sure that we protect that topsoil. That we don't lose that sediment. So one of the one of the practices, just I just put that up there, is cover crops, and is very 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 good uh, for our planting. So okay, how do we start with this? The way we start with this is uh, there's a program that we call conservation technical assistance. That's the first thing we do with you, conservation CTA, conservation technical assistance. Basically, what that calls for is that I will visit your place and we will um, see every corner of your land. You tell me what are you planning to do? What are you doing? What are your goals? So that I could produce a conservation plan for you. Um, there is a, there, how can I say this? On your, on your planning, when you have your parties and you have your plans, you have, it's like a roadmap, but you can have this all in your mind. Okay, I wanna do this, I wanna, I wanna do this, maybe I'll do this in two years, but if there's no action to it, if there's not a plan that you could see and could follow, sometimes it stays behind and we go through rabbit trails. So what the conservation plan does for you is basically, put that goals that you have and how we could technically help you. And in addition to that, if we have a program that will give you incentives, um, then we put that all together and that will be your roadmap. At any time, it could be changed because it's, it's your plan, it's not my plan, but we try to see what are your plans and what can we put together to help you. So that's what conservation technical assistance is. That's the way we start. Um, let me see. Um, there is another pro uh, program and it's called Equip. A lot of people think that that means, do you have a tractor you can help me with? Do you have a piece of equipment you can help me with? No, it's not that. It is stands for, Equip stands for Environmental Quality Incentive Program. And basically uh, this program helps you um, get your priorities and see how can we help you. Let's say you can get water from point A to point B. 
you need a structure there, you need a culvert. So maybe we could plan on a culvert. So then you have more control of your water there. So that's one of the things that um, equip could help you. Equip could help you with cover crops. Equip could help you with conservation crop rotations. And what's the best rotation for me? Would it be, I've been doing sugar cane and corn, and then I go back to sugar cane. It's, will that help me? Can I put maybe a legume in the middle? Maybe that will help me a little bit more, will help the soil, will build up the soil. Should I till or should I not till? How can I incorporate um, the excess of what my harvest leaves behind, should I incorporate it? So all those questions, we could talk about that and I could present to you what, um, what is best for your, your farm. So that's what EQIP does for you. We have another program called uh, CSP, Conservation Stewardship Program. This is a program for um, basically uh, farmers and ranchers and foresters too, we don't have many foresters down here, but um, that would go ahead and they have, they're already good stewards of their land. So they want to enhance certain practices. They want, okay, I'm doing conservation crop. How can I step this? How can I en enhance it a little bit more? I'm doing conservation cover uh, right now. Uh, how can I enhance this? Can I do something better with that? Uh, so that's what uh, conservation stewardship program does. It helps you enhance. This program works for five years. Um, Equip, we go up to five years, but it could be a, uh, an agreement of one, two, three years. Uh, conservation stewardship program is definitely for five years. You have to have control of your land. Either you own it or you lease it for five years. And there's ASIP. ASIP is basically um, for people that have wetlands and they have areas of wildlife that want to protect. It's an easement program. I don't think um, um, a lot of people in this, in this scenario will be interested on in that one, but I have information on it. Okay, within our programs, we have different type of funding. We have beginning farmer, social disadvantaged farmer, rancher, and veterans. Uh, so in the beginning farmers, you will have to be uh, 10 years uh, or younger on farming uh, a ranch, um, farming your, your farm or a rancher. So you will have to just be 10 years or younger on that one to qualify for that special funding. Uh, social disadvantaged farmer are, will be uh, people that have been uh, socially disadvantaged, either um, they're minorities or uh, they're of a class that has been in disadvantage in the past. And we also have the veterans, farmers and ranchers, which, uh, it's like it says, it's veterans that are coming back to farm or ranch for the first time. Okay, through the use of conservation planning practices are implemented to address identify resource concerns in order to meet the client objectives. Remember the word resource, uh, natural resource concerns. So that's what we are all about. I see the resource concerns that you have in your farm and then I address it. We try to address it with different practices or best management practices that we may have. In this case, um, I know Dr. Reed here has uh, done studies with the barn owl. We do uh, do incentive for the barn owl, which is a, a great thing to have. And lately, the last few years, I've had a lot of people asking for that. So. Uh, something else we do, we've talked about the structures also, and uh, we, there we go, and then we're talking um, about people that need, either need to improve their irrigation system, or maybe they need an irrigation system, maybe they are using, so we would have um, people that maybe need they don't have irrigation system, but maybe they have an overhead 
uh, sprinklers and maybe that's not exactly what they need. Maybe they're wasting the water that way and they're creating other things that happen. Maybe their plants are getting sick, which I've seen that. So if you go into a drip system or you go to a micro system, a spray, uh, spray system, then the plant will be receiving water right there where it's needed in the root system. So um, that is some of the practices I, um, that we, we kind of cover. So again, our uh, agency, that's what is basically all about. Determine what are the resource concerns in your land and then match our practices, our conservation practices to it. Okay, let me give you an example. Some of the uh, resource concerns could be, um, well, I did that, I gave that example, insufficient water. So under insufficient water or inadequate water, um, we have the irrigation system sprinkle, we could have micro irrigation, depending on what you're irrigating. Um, maybe you have the irrigation system, the correct irrigation system, but maybe you just need to have how to manage it, how can I manage it better? What can I do? So there is irrigation water management that we can help you with. Uh, we can help you with land leveling, land smoothing. I know that is, that is a big one here in the EAA. Um, and water quality, filter strips, they do, they do a good job on helping uh, the topsoil and not uh, having that much erosion. Um, degraded plant condition, uh, some years ago we have uh, an initiative which has been um, well, um, a lot of people have uh, applied for it, high tunnels. The high tunnels is, um, is for, in ground, planting in ground for crops. It's not for nurseries. Um, when it started to come, uh, when it started this initiative, a lot of people thought it was for nurseries, for landscape. No, it, it is for crops actually. And um, one of our growers or a few of our growers have used it and you have to learn a little bit how to use it. But Florida is so unique and especially South Florida is so unique because we have a window opportunity when we talk about market during the winter time. It's, it's just in a lot of our growers take advantage of it. And the high tonal is one thing that has helped them. Uh, nutrient management for fertilizer. So what type of fertilizer should I use? Uh, what, what do you recommend? Um, have you done a soil sample? That will be the best thing you could do to start with. Get a soil sample, let's see what, what is recommended and uh, we take it from there. Um, integrated pest management. Okay, do you, what kind of pest do you have? What is your problem? What should we use? Okay, so that could all be addressed if, if you see, if we see that your plants are, are not in the condition they should be. So these will be practices, this is just an example. What, what practices will be able to address under that resource concern? Uh, fish and wildlife inadequate habitat. We have the upland wildlife habitat and that's where that uh, barn owl box comes into play. Examples of soil erosion, a resource concern that over here uh, we need to be concerned about, critical area planting. Okay, what can I plant for my soil not to be eroded? Wind erosion, water erosion, uh, conservation crop rotation. We talked about that earlier um, in my presentation. Cover crop, very important. For soil quality and degradation, conservation cover, some of them overlap. So if you have one practice that can help few of those resource concerns. Uh, conservation, crop rotation, again, under soil quality degradation. In Florida, in Florida, we have different initiatives and we have organic initiative, we have energy initiative, uh, pollinator Everglades initiative, which is this area. And there is a pocket of money that is normally put for this area. So you guys are in an advantage. Whoever is here in the EIA, the other advantage that they have is that they have um, the record set up already with farm service agency. So that means that you have a farm and track number. And when it comes to paperwork, that's half of the paperwork already done there. So everybody that's here in the EIA, has that advantage. 
Um, Longleaf pine doesn't come all the way to the south, but we do have that initiative, uh, water quality initiative and working land for wildlife. Priorities on um, resource concerns that we have in Florida will be water quality degradation, insufficient water, soil health, plant and animal health, inadequate habitat for fish and wildlife. Those are basic priorities. So when we try to work with you, we're gonna see if these are a problem and giving you a problem with meeting your goals. Okay, so how does it work? Rosa, you've been talking about all this. So, so how does it work? How can I make this? How can I see if I could apply for one of your programs? How can I know if I'm eligible for one of your programs? So this is how it works. First thing you have to do is if you are here in pump, whoops, I pushed the wrong button. I am so sorry. Okay, so how does it work? The first thing you have to do, if you're in Palm Beach or Broward County, you call me. Um, I'm sure when you see it in the screen, you could write down my phone number, you could email, will be great too. Um, contact me and we'll schedule an appointment to be at your farm. And uh, we'll take, depending how big your farm is, if it's small, maybe I'll take, you know, one or two hours, depending how big it is. If it's big, then pr probably a morning. And then we'll just talk. We'll just visit your farm and talk about what you do, what are your goals, what are you doing, what are you planning to do, so then we could put our plans together. Once I visit you, and you're still interested, right? We could develop that conservation plan that I'm talking about, and then you could apply for our programs, okay? You, then at that point, I know, okay, EQIP will be a good program for you. EQIP has different type of uh, funding, so we could see which one will, would you be good at it, which, which one will be beneficial for you, I should say, or maybe a CSP. So, to do that, we need to talk, I need to visit you. Then it goes into, if you decide for um, incentive, then we'll go and see eligibility. For eligibility, there's a few forms you have to fill up, not with me, you will have to fill it up with a farm service agency. And uh, again, the people, the farmers and ranchers that are here in the EAA, the majority know about FSA. And uh, I could guide you in what you have to do and then connect you with the people with the paperwork um, that you need to fill out. Okay, ranking. What's ranking all about? We have all our programs are taking place through rankings. EQIP has national, national, state, and local questions. And depending on the funding and what program you're applying, it could be something that is in South Florida, it could be something you're competing with others throughout the state. So we ask in that, in the ranking, there's many questions that are asked. It considers where is your farm? Are you close to the lake? Are you close to a canal? Are you close to a sanctuary? Um, what, what, do you, what is there? It considers many things. So it comes up with a ranking and then it considers what are you offering to do? What practices are you gonna do? How is it gonna affect your farm? How is it gonna affect the environment? We also do a environmental assessment. Then after that, there's a period of waiting. Okay, the ranking's done, now you wait. And then um, once I, if I call you and tell you, hey, you have funding for, for it, then we go into signing an agreement that you are planning to do this um, with your conservation plan. So that is a portion um, of how it works. In CSP, uh, is a little different. That program is a little bit different because it considers what are you doing right now with your farm? What, how good of a steward you are with your farm right now, your best management practices. And then it also considers what are you planning to enhance? Okay, maybe you weren't doing, um, uh, maybe you were not doing, let me see, um, irrigation water management, and you're going to tweak it, you're going to enhance it. So you're doing it, but you're going to enhance it, you're going to try to manage your water better. So that's what conservation stewardship program 
thus for you. And that's the way it, it considers the ranking. Okay, with this, I just wanted to let you know that we work with different people. We work with ranchers, we work with um, farmers, uh, we work with people that are interested in wildlife. Um, I don't know it all, but NRCS has different people that have different specialties. Um, I may not know a lot about wildlife, but I could call somebody in my agency that knows about wildlife. I may not know a lot about grasses for cattle, but I have somebody that knows about um, uh, forage and pasture. So, you know, we have all kinds of different specialties in our agency. So what I wanted to, what I want to end up saying is, that you are good stewards of your land. And I know that if not, you will not be listening to me right now. And, you know, whatever, once we part from here, you know, the best thing we could do is leave a land for our kids, our community, that we have managed the right way and be good stewards. So that's a legacy we leave back. Um, so that's why the picture of, of the child there and uh, walking with the sign of NRCS. So that's what we are all about. So that is my information. Um, I cover Palm Beach and Broward. If anybody is interested in any other county, I will direct you to um, somebody that works that county and I could... Um, give you their phone number so you could visit with them. So, but when it comes to Palm Beach and Broward, you know, uh, you could call me, that's my phone number. You could email me and you just mention that you work here and I, I would go ahead and, um, and visit your farm. You just schedule it. Any questions? Thank you, Rosa. Uh, I'll first open it up to uh, virtual if there are any folks on Zoom that have any questions. David, in the chat, any question? Anyone? Okay. Sure. So Rosa can be contacted via email. Uh, and reach out. Rosa, I did have one question, and maybe you could an answer that one. Regarding organic amendments, uh, application of biosolids, organic amendments in, into farming, is that a conservation practice? Is that considered as a conservation practice? We, we, we do that. It has to do, we, we have our specifications and our um, standards and specifications that we're guided by. And we have some forms and we, as long as we know what, what is there, like I was saying, if you have, if you're planning to apply any amendments or any nutrient management fertilizer, we need to know what's there first. And that could be through the soil or through the, through the plant, whatever they wanna test. And then they will do the recommendations just like IFAS does. And then we go by that. So if we know what's being applied, um, what amendments are being applied, the amount that being applied, then we'll, there's a recommendation. So we just make sure that they both uh, agree. And yes, there is an incentive for that. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Once again, thank you, Rosa, for coming here to the center and enlightening us on the topic of uh, what NRCS does. Thank you, everyone.